Coming up now in your spoiler-free wrestling news rundown, there is an update on the rumored joint show involving both AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling. We've also got news from New Japan Pro Wrestling in both Japan and the United States, and we take a look at what's coming up on tonight's episode of AEW Dynamite. Subscribe to Spoiler Free Wrestling for all your wrestling news. Recent reports are suggesting that All Elite Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling could be running a joint show together in the coming months. So there was a report that came out from the Super J cast indicating that they had heard that New Japan Pro Wrestling and AEW would be running a joint event on Thursday, June 23rd from Chicago, Illinois. Dave Meltzer then commented on the possibility of such a show happening when he was on an episode of the Sunday Night's Main Event podcast. Here is what Dave Meltzer had to say about the potential for a New Japan AEW co-promoted show. Meltzer said, I heard the rumors of a New Japan AEW show, and the only thing I can say is I asked and it wasn't denied. It wasn't confirmed, and they're not going to confirm to me the surprise. So to me, that leaves that one on the table as a potential surprise, because if they are not doing that show, I believe I would have been told we're not doing that show. So I think there's smoke to that fire. So June 23rd is uh, on a Thursday, so it's not a night that AEW typically runs, but all the same, they could do a special, it could be something that's done for New Japan World, but it really further deepens the working relationship that AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling have cultivated over the last couple of years. AEW President Tony Khan is set to make a major announcement on Dynamite tonight. However, it's not clear if that announcement will have something to do with a potential New Japan AEW show or not. It could also have to do with a streaming deal for the company or perhaps a new television deal for Ring of Honor. We'll just have to wait and see what the AEW president announces on Dynamite. New Japan Pro Wrestling has been back out on the road this week for the Golden Fight Series Tour as we build up to Wrestling Dontaku on Sunday, May the 1st. So only one of these shows aired live on New Japan World and none of them have English commentary. So on the show Monday, uh, there was not really many newsworthy things to come out of it, just uh, multi-person tag matches setting up some of the matches at Wrestling Dontaku. But the big show that will lead into Wrestling Dontaku takes place in Hiroshima on Monday, April 25th. And that show will see two title matches, as we will see Hiroshi Tanahashi and the Gorillas of Destiny, Tamatanga and Tanga Loa, challenge for the Never Openweight Six-Man Tag Team Championships against the champions from the House of Torture, Evil Show, and Yujiro Takahashi. And then also in the main event on Monday's show from Hiroshima, Taichi is going to defend the KOPW trophy against Shingo Takagi. So this will be the first KOPW match that does not feature Toru Yano. And Taichi has promised a new era for the KOPW. So if you're not aware, each competitor in this match will propose a unique set of rules that the fans will then vote on. And the winning set of rules is then what they will wrestle under. So... Here is what both Tai Chi and Shingo Takagi has, have presented for the rules of the match. So Tai Chi has suggested what is being called a 30 count match. And in this match, multiple falls will see a cumulative count from the referee. The winner is the wrestler who can get a combined 30 count on their opponent. So it doesn't matter if you get a three count, you could get 15 two counts, you could get 31 counts, and that would win you the match. Meanwhile, Shingo Takagi has uh, uh, suggested a three falls match. So in this style of match, it would be the first wrestler to get three falls on their opponent, but rather than it being the best three out of five, a competitor must first get a one count, then a two count, and then a three count. So you've got to get a one count, two count, then three count. I'm not sure exactly how that works if you get like four two counts. Because, you know, you could just never kick out at one. Anyway, those are the rules that are suggested by Takagi and Taichi, and the fans will vote on that. And then they'll face off on the 25th in the main event of that show from 
uh, Hiroshima. So that event will be the last to air on New Japan World before we get to Wrestling Dontaku. So then a series of tag matches set up the uh, bigger matches on that show. So we'll see Hanma and Maccabi tag up against Tiger Mask and Nakashima. See Oiwa, Wato, and Taguchi take on Zack Sabre Jr., Doki, and Kanemaru. See Takamichinoku and El Desperado tag up as they take on Gato and Taiji Ishimori. Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto will team up to take on the other team that's going to challenge for the IWGP Heavyweight Championships at Wrestling Dontaku, and that's Bad Luck Fale and Chase Owens. Yo, Toru Yano and Kazuchika Okada will team up to take on Bushi, Hiramu Takahashi, and Tetsuya Naito. And of course, then also there's the two title matches that we just mentioned. For New Japan Pro Wrestling in the United States, they are gearing up for two events which are going to happen in May. They have a pay-per-view on May 14th. That's Capital Collision from Washington, D.C. Now, no matches have been officially announced for that pay-per-view. However, Angle setting up matches uh, took place at Windy City Riot. And so very likely, although not confirmed, we had John Moxley challenge Hiroshi Tanahashi to a match for Capital Collision on the 14th. So assuming that is likely to occur. Eddie Kingston challenged Tomohiro Ishii to a match at Capital Collision. Um, and Brody King and Minaro Suzuki were involved in a backstage altercation at Windy City Riot, setting up a possible match at Capital Collision as well. The following day, New Japan Pro Wrestling of the USA will head to Philadelphia's 2300 Arena for a set of tapings for New Japan Strong. And so recently they announced three new matches which will take place on that card. Those include... QT Marshall from The Factory. He's going to take on LA Dojo graduate Carl Fredericks. Uh, Jake Something, who you might remember if you follow Impact Wrestling. He recently left that promotion. He's going to make his NJPW debut as he faces Brody King. Also, David Finley is going to take on Team Filthy's Danny Limelight. So, seven announced matches now for Collision in Philadelphia the night after Capital Collision. Those include the three matches I just mentioned as well as Alex Coughlin, Kevin Knight, and the DKC taking on Jarrell Nelson, Royce Isaacs, and J.R. Kratos from Team Filthy. Killer Cross is back in action for New Japan Pro Wrestling. He's going to take on Yuya Uemura. Minaro Suzuki is going to take on Tony Deppin, and Hiroshi Tanahashi is going to take on Chris Dickinson. We put out a breaking news update yesterday regarding the future of Kushida, one of the most highly decorated IWGP junior heavyweight champions of all time. He has spent the last three years in WWE on the NXT brand. It was reported by Fightful that after the expiration of his contract with the company, Kushida has left WWE. It was later reported by Dave Meltzer on an episode of Wrestling Observer Radio that People in WWE are expecting Kushida to return to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Here is what Dave Meltzer had to say about Kushida's future. He said, He is done. His contract expired. It was not a secret that he wasn't going to stay. I know in WWE, the belief is that he starts with New Japan in June. That's what they believe, and it's probably the case. So, Kushida, one of the most successful Junior heavyweights in the history of the promotion could be returning to New Japan just in time to miss the best of the Super Juniors. So he was with New Japan Pro Wrestling from 2010 to 2019, and during that time he was a six-time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, a two-time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champion, along with Alex Shelley as the Time Splitters. He won the best of the Super Juniors in 2015 and 2017 and won the Super J Cup in 2016. Him and Alex Shelley also won the Super Junior Tag Tournament in 2012. A report surfaced yesterday from Fightful that suggested WWE is bringing or wants to bring back the team currently known as FTR that was once known as the Revival in WWE. The report said that FTR's contracts expire in the summer, however, that was later refuted by sources within AEW who said that FTR have over a year left on their contract and then after that, AEW has the option to renew those deals by one year. So FTR could conceivably be under contract with AEW until 2024. Despite that, a report went out yesterday that WWE has interest in bringing back the team. 
So I'm not sure exactly what that means since WWE did try to re-sign AEW in early 2020. They reportedly turned down five-year contract offers and debuted on AEW Dynamite on May 27th, 2020. Since leaving WWE and signing with AEW, FTR are one-time AEW World Tag Team Champions, one-time and current AAA World Tag Team Champions, and one-time and current ROH World Tag Team Champions. In WWE as The Revival, they were two-time NXT Tag Team Champions, two-time Raw Tag Team Champions, and one-time SmackDown Tag Team Champions. FTR win a lot of championships. Jack Evans announced on Twitter recently that AEW will not be renewing his contract when it comes up for renewal on April 30th. So Evans, who had been with the promotion since the very beginning, will be leaving the company. Here is what Evans wrote on Twitter. He said, My time with AEW has been fun and enjoyable, but it has come to an end as I will not be re-signed when my contract ends at the end of April. I'd like to thank everyone at AEW and the AEW fans for the opportunity. He also responded to someone on Twitter who was critical of his release. Evans wrote, Nah, it's part of the business. Not to diss myself, but I wasn't giving any added value to the company truthfully, and with a big roster, you do gotta make cuts. As for Angelico, it doesn't appear as though he is going to be released from the promotion. He actually just returned to action after a lengthy stay on the injured list. He wrestled on last week's edition of Dark Elevation that was filmed from the UNO Lakefront Arena in New Orleans. That was his first match back in over four months. So it doesn't appear as though Angelico is going to be departing the promotion, just Jack Evans. Uh, however, we will see what the future holds for Angelico as well. And just horrible news continues to happen regarding Tammy Sitch, a.k.a. Sunny. So we reported in an earlier video that Tammy Sitch was involved in a fatal car accident that led to the death of a 75-year-old man. Although she has not been charged with anything, uh, police at the time felt that she was intoxicated. Witnesses say she was driving at a high rate of speed when she crashed into the back of a car that was stopped at a stoplight. The driver of that car was transported to hospital and ultimately died. That car then hit the car in front of it. Uh, no serious injuries were reported in that car, however. So it has now been reported by PW Insider that the family of the man who was killed in the accident is suing Tammy Sitch. And they are suing for in excess of $30,000. Sitch's boyfriend is also being sued as a result of him lending her his car. Sitch, of course, does not have a valid driver's license due to numerous DUI arrests that she has incurred over recent years. So police do suspect that she was intoxicated at the time of the crash. However, toxicology reports are still pending, so no charges have been brought up against Sitch at this time. However, if those toxicology reports come back and show that she was intoxicated at the time of the crash, that will change. And finally, AEW presents an episode of Dynamite tonight from the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And you know that anytime AEW goes to Pittsburgh, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, is the big star. She will be in action on the show in an Owen Hart Foundation Women's Tournament qualifying match. She'll take on Danielle Camella. That is the former Vanessa Bourne from NXT. Five other matches have been scheduled for the show, including... Wardlow taking on The Butcher. CM Punk is going to be in action. He's going to take on Dustin Rhodes. Hook is going to make his AEW Dynamite debut. He's been wrestling on Rampage. Uh, however, his opponent has not been announced as of yet. In an Owen Hart Foundation men's tournament qualifying match, we will see Kyle O'Reilly take on Jungle Boy. And in a coffin match, Andrade El Idolo is going to take on Darby Allin. Plus, AEW President Tony Khan has said that he plans on making a major announcement on tonight's show. And that'll do it for this video, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe to Spoiler Free Wrestling for all your wrestling news.